My name is Bill Storey and I welcome you to our podcast series called Going Through the Retirement Doors Successfully. This podcast series is brought to you by Olderhood.com, which is a leading online retirement community around the world with over 70,000 followers. Olderhood discusses the issues for people approaching retirement and for people already in retirement. This podcast series is therefore appropriate for pre-retirees and post-retirees, as we refer to each sector. We run our own blog called Olderhood. We have various Facebook pages, LinkedIn, Pinterest and so forth. We write our own articles, produce our own videos, podcasts and television shows. We also provide retirement coaching services and retirement readiness assessments. The purpose of this retirement series is to focus on the variety of concerns and observations about life in the retirement years of our lives, over and above financial planning issues. In fact, we don't offer any financial advice at all, but concentrate on the emotional well-being of our members when impacted by such things as financial constraints, health matters, family issues, filling the day, still being useful in society, longevity, mortality, etc. We have a wide range of interests. I hope you'll find our style of podcast much more relaxed and casual than others. We're not news readers, but prefer to chat with our members in a more normal and comfortable fashion. Okay, enough said, let's get started. This is Series 1, Episode 2, called Retirement Happiness. The words retirement happiness are used time and time again when people, retired or, or not yet retired, seem to use when describing their ideal retirement lifestyle. It is really a recurring emotion, uppermost in everyone's mind or in their wish list. They want to have happiness. In every conversation about retirement, whether the theme is money or health or family life or love or hobbies, etc., the word happiness is always part of that conversation. It is the most common word in the language of the retiree by far. We may not always have happiness, but we always crave it, all of us. In this episode, we'll discuss the fundamental description of retirement happiness. Then, in subsequent episodes, we'll get into specific things you can do to achieve that happiness. A few years ago, I met a man in his early 60s through a, a mutual acquaintance. At the time when I spoke with him, he was approaching retirement. He was a school teacher in England, and apart from missing the other teachers, he said, I will actually miss the students more. Today, he's long since retired, and his retirement couldn't have gone better. But, as he said, it took me a couple of years to adjust, and then readjust. I certainly was deflated in the first several months. The feeling of having nowhere to go, nothing to do, and no one to talk to, was a real downer for me. Once I realised that being in retirement meant I could do what I wanted to do and that the next day I could do the same again and the next day, then my self-confidence slowly began to rise. So I asked him what he meant by self-confidence. Well, he said, I had been in charge for many years as a school teacher. When I closed the classroom door, I ran the show. And I had learned as a young teacher that if I didn't have confidence in myself, then the students would pick up on that quickly and probably take advantage. So when you're retired, you lost the confidence in yourself, I asked. Absolutely, I did indeed, he said. For a while, I couldn't figure out why I was depressed. The number of people who had said how lucky I was that I was retiring and that I could now do whatever I wanted to do it began to annoy me. I needed the company. So what changed you? I woke up, he said. Simple as that. I had enough money. My health was fine. I had nothing tangible to complain about. Yet, I was missing something, he said. I wasn't happy. I just could not bring myself to use the word happiness. I had the feeling that if I did use the word happiness, then some terrible event would hit me. Superstition, you might call it. Yet, it was a real feeling deep inside of me. But then I slowly began to rebuild my life. Did you feel that you were being silly about it, I asked? Eh, a little bit, maybe, he said. But it soon became clear 
that if I didn't take charge of my life, then no one was going to do it for me. I decided to do everyday things that made me happy. Simultaneously, I decided not to do everyday things that made me unhappy. That was really a very naive and simple way to look at things. I kept saying to myself that surely retirement life couldn't be that straightforward. But it was that easy. As I made the changes in my life, my happiness level slowly climbed. This simple explanation of change has made an enormous difference to him. He now approaches each day as a challenge. Some days he, he may do nothing, but he sees that day as a day when he decided to do nothing. And he accomplished his goal. Tomorrow will be another day. In his case, the words retirement happiness meant that he had the license to decide what he felt like doing day by day. He could choose to lie in bed all day if he wanted, or, or cut the grass, or, or go shopping. You get the idea. In other words, retirement happiness is a very personal thing. I don't play golf, but a good friend of mine, who's also retired, loves the game. It bores me, yet excites him. He's never happier than when he wanders around the golf course on a, on a nice sunny morning with few people around. Sometimes after he's finished, he and I will have lunch. So how was it, I'll ask, more through courtesy than interest? Brilliant, he will always say. Same expression of happiness every single time. But I've, yeah, I've never understood why some days after a poor round of golf, why he wouldn't simply say, I was awful, the game stinks and I may never play it again. But he never does. He's always happy to have played. His choice, I agree, not mine. I think some of us expect far too much out, out of this need to be happy issue, particularly in retirement. Maybe it really is the simple things in our life that excites us most. Or maybe we just need a mindset that, by and large, forces us to generally look on the bright side of life day in and day out. So ask yourself this question. Do I choose to be happy or do I choose to be unhappy? Here's today's takeaway. Retirement happiness is something you have to decide about for yourself. Only you and you alone can achieve a deep sense of contentment in retirement. But you must work at it. Okay, that's it for this episode. Next time we'll chat about other specific issues and features of retirement life. And with any luck, <laughs> we might be able to help you get through that door successfully. You can email me at bill at olderhood.com or visit our website at www.olderhood.com theolderhoodgroup.com. Bye for now. I'm Bill Story, now signing off. Take care.